You can have Mike Tyson. <laughs> you ain't got anything fancy like that for me, though, huh, do you? We just call you the sheriff. Mm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on the mic with Mike, the best business radio program around. How do I know? Because we get the best guests. Plus, we got the best sponsors. In the building with us, we got Andy Tiller of Junk Luggers. Uh, sir, give a, an intro to Junk Luggers, what you guys do really quickly. Well, Junk Luggers, uh, we have the green trucks you probably see flying around town. We are a uh, eco-friendly and uh, charitably uh, focused junk and furniture removal business. We actually try to avoid the landfill by donating and working with local area charities to repurpose, recycle, and donate the items as opposed to uh, dump, dumping them in like yesterday's trash. So uh, give us a call, 804-505-LUG, L-U-G-G. Well, tell so you guys really do a lot in the community. Thank you for that one, one of the... One of the real reasons that I always love working with you guys because it is eco-friendly, plus you do tons in the community. But we are here today to talk about a serious topic. On the mic with Mike, we're going to have a remote, we're going to do a restaurant report. And if we're going to talk about the state of the restaurant business, we got to go talk to our good friends over at House. Hospitality, is that how you say it? It is, Hospitality. Hospitality. Mike King, uh, Andy Taylor here with Emmy Finch. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. So you guys are of the uh, Casa del Barco fame, as well as uh, the Boathouse. Mm -hmm. I was just at Casa del Barco short pump. Outstanding as usual. Name yeah. dropping. Yeah. Well, hey, that's how I do it. Yeah. You know, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's, that's your business, man. That's right. We don't keep secrets here. We blow things up. <laughs> All righty, ma'am, let us know about the business that you guys are in the organization. Then we're going to talk about the struggles. And you are the HR lady. So Andy Taylor and I are going to be on our best behavior because we don't want to get called into your office. Exactly. Because, or, she, she said exactly. She didn't deny <laughs> you don't want to come in here. Guilt by association. Exactly. I'm not the one. All right, ma'am, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. So we own and operate all of the boathouses, Casa del Barco's, and Island Shrimp Co. in and around the Richmond area. Um, we have eight locations, um, and uh, we supply um, roughly right now uh, around 480 jobs. Now you have 480 jobs? Okay. And build them, in, yes. in the heyday, how many is it that you really would need to run efficiently? Uh, anywhere between six to seven hundred. Okay. Okay. Let's let's on the mic with Mike. We're here with the good folks from uh, Casa de Barco as well as uh, Island Shrimp and the Boathouse. Let's go back to 2019. You guys sat around the big table. You guys are going to kill it for 2020. All these big plans, and then Corona showed up. Yep. Okay. So you survive without reservations. With the, and you know, for that so, kind of restaurant, you dumb. you know, showing up without reservations is straight up rude. <laughs> right. it, it really is. And it showed up for everybody and said, okay, we're gonna shut this thing down for a while. It's called this thing called life. We're gonna shut it down. So you guys made it through 2020 and the pandemic. What did you learn for, as a business organization? Uh, that we had to tap into one of our core values of innovation. And uh, our goal was to stay open and to stay relevant. Um, and those were our only goals at, at the very beginning. And um, then throughout 2020, um, we learned that opportunity was all around us. And we had to tap in to find out how to fill the cup. You know, I always say the cup's not half empty, the cup's not half full, it's how do we fill the cup? So uh, we got really creative and, and innovative. So when, when you've made it through, what's something that you guys have taken on that prior to the pandemic, you never would have thought about? And now you're looking at that saying, hey, that turned out pretty well for us. Uh, we're going to continue doing it. Yeah, this is an awesome question. So online menu ordering, um, you know, three weeks ago, it was called contactless service. Um, but, you know, now that restrictions have lifted, we are um, adopting online menu ordering. And this is allowing the guest to order at their fingertips uh, on their smartphones. Um, it is allowing them to pace their own experience in the restaurant. They order when they want. 
Um, food arrives, drinks and beverages arrive. You never have to wait for a, a server to come over and take an order, write it down, go to a computer, put it in, somebody makes it, tech comes out. Now it's just all quick and efficient. You can leave when you're done. You don't have to wait for a check. Um, and we are embracing that style of service and we are going to continue to, um, to make it work. Okay, ma'am, I'm, I'm the older generation. <laughs> yeah, the, the gentleman here next to me. That's good. Whatever happened to the old school restaurant experience? You just told me I came into a restaurant, sat down and I didn't have to deal with anybody. And then I get up and leave and it's just like, okay, I don't even ever need this body to say bye to. So here's the I'm thing. Not at home, right? Exactly. <laughs> so here's the thing. We've tailored this online menu service with a team of service professionals that we're paying a professional wage to. And they are going to come over and make sure everyone's having a good time. Okay. So, you know, you're welcomed at the door, you're embraced there, you're sat down, and then a leader, we're calling them captains, they're going to come over to the table, they're going to tell you what kind of experience this is going to be, they're going to answer any questions that you have, there's a button, we got a button on the table, it's a called button. Tab Lee, you got a button, and if you need a captain, you got a question, you want a different style of service, all you got to do is press the button. Oh, it's we're the there. best of both. That's the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Okay. So now we're here talking about the issue that everyone has, which is talent not showing up to work. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's talk about that from an industry perspective. So this was, um, that was probably our, our biggest challenge and hurdle to overcome this year uh, because we, as a small business, we're trying to compete with um, government assistance and man, they were, they were handing a lot out and they are continuing to hand a lot out. And so to compete with that is, um, it was real, real hard, but, uh, we decided that we were going to pay a competitive, livable, sustainable wage to every employee. It's something that our owner, uh, Kevin Healy has wanted to do for a very long time. And it was coming anyway with the minimum wage uh, hikes. So we decided, again, COVID brought us an opportunity to try something. Um, and so that's what we're doing. Our servers, our captains make anywhere from 20 to $25 an hour. Our bussers make anywhere from 14 to $17 an hour. Nobody makes less than $12 an hour. And by the end of 2022, we want everyone to at least start at 15. So um, we're getting aggressive with it, and that's how we're finding our people. How does that impact prices? I was just going to, I'm sorry. No, that's what I was just saying. immediately. I thought, well, somebody's going to have to. So, pay yeah, for that. Right. the end user paying $22 for the burger. Yeah, like where's the, co where, where's the yes. money in the coffers, right? So, what we decided that we were going to do, and again, COVID allowed us to do this, was uh, charge a 20% service charge to every bill. Okay. And so we are, we are, tapping into that. So with our online menu ordering service, we're charging that 20% and we're taking that money and we feed it to all of our employees. Now, some people really, really love what we do because we're awesome. And they tip above and beyond 20%, which you can do through our phone app. Um, and then that money is incentivized and divided between all employees that worked that shift. So if you washed a window at eight o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday and there was a tip share, you're getting some of it. The dishwasher gets it, the line cook gets it, the host gets it, the server gets it. Okay, now that you guys are known as far as culture goes as being a great place to work and do business, uh, you know, corporate philanthropy and involvement in the community is all in your DNA. Let's talk a little bit about the culture piece. How do you, how do you get culture like that well i know one of the ways is you what you just said including everybody in you know in the fund getting paid yeah so the the restaurant industry in america um in general is an antiquated system right um it's not it's 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 every man for himself you know you show up you make your 213 an hour you get your tips and you get the heck out of there right 
Um, and we have decided that that is not what we want to participate in, that we want to be a company of growth and we want to be a company of, um, of, of hospitality, hospitality and family. And so we're adopting this European um, way of, of running a restaurant, which is that you get paid a sustainable living wage and you're respected. People want to be valued for their time. And part of value is monetary, right? And so if you're paying somebody what they feel their value is, they will stay and they'll stay for a long time and that they'll make a career out of it. On the mic with Mike, Andy Taylor here, Junk Luggers, we have Henry French of uh, Hospitality. That's a, that's, a, that's a cool name too as well. So you guys are known for Casa de Barcos as well as the Boathouse franchise in the area. We have to go away for a moment, pay some bills, but you guys are gonna be part of our uh, restaurant a report where we're going to we're going to bring the best and the brightest together to talk about best practices and that will air here on ESPN Richmond and more about that to come but we got to go away and pay bills so man we'll be back shortly and uh, we'll talk more about your fine organization we'll be back just a moment Hey Mike, that sound keeps interrupting the recording. What is that? Your phone? Is that your phone? Hmm? Is your phone making noise? No. I don't know. I don't know, who, I don't know whose phone that could be. Mine's on vibrate. Yeah, I don't know whose phone that could be making noise. Does yours go off? <laughs> you have no sounds. <laughs> yep, then it's yours. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Appreciate it. No problem. No, you don't. Turn that shit off. <laughs> you think this is I'm wondering about this whole restaurant thing. Uh, uh, you know, are you losing what I call the quote unquote professional waiter and waitress who worked at La Mer or places like this and mm. came in, they did their thing, but they made $300 in tips and whatever, you know, that was their, you know, they made big money. Um, obviously, yeah. You've now gotten rid of that guy. You're sort of bringing it up in the middle. Now you have sort of the people that are, they're, yeah, they're not the black tie skilled. It people. makes it hard. But that she's right. That's the way it's done in Europe. Though. Yeah, there's no tipping. It's yeah. Like when they first moved there, it was crazy. Like when they had everybody would just sit at the big common table. That was one of the hard things to get used to. Like America, we're just used to. This is my table. How dare you? And people just sat down. And like the non tipping thing, and no, it's just expected. Yeah. So I wonder if people like the 20%, or she just make your prices 20% higher so you don't have the, the extra charges. I, yeah, I learned the hard way about the whole uh, the 20% when we were downtown, and there was four of us, and we were like, okay. And then all of a sudden, it was just me and my wife one time we were sitting at the bar, and I was just like, it's kind of weird, you know, you put the, the automatic gratuity on. But one of the things we're going to talk to her about is like the whole rise of. Well, she's saying that gratuity doesn't go to the, the it's, it's what goes to the wages. Yeah. Salary. The restaurant keeps it, well, uses 20% to offset those costs. Interesting. When the industry has changed. Yeah, and just like people didn't understand the whole Uber and DoorDash stuff, we didn't know how, you know, and now because I deal with some restaurants, you're like, oh, okay. You know, so that $12 burger all of a sudden.
I hadn't heard my commercial yet. You're in it. Say you're in the next hour. It's like you're in the next hour. Say yeah, you. Well, oh, it's the second hour. Gotcha. See, you 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 came early. I should have had you come. Had, should have had you come during the second hour. I do as I'm told. It, well, here we go. <laughs> exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, weather today, overcast, a stray shower of thunderstorms it is possible. 83 is the high winds out of the south, southeast, 5 to 10 miles an hour. The humidity, 59%. 6 out of 10 is the index. And the sunset will be today at 825. If you need hotel space, make sure you go check them out. Uh, that is Cena Hospitality, as well as uh, for event space. On the mic with Mike back with Emmy from Hospitality. We wanted to touch on the idea of at the end user, we didn't understand uh, the whole Uber, not Uber Eats and DoorDash, what that really did to the restaurant industry. We know that we contacted them and it showed up and it was more expensive only because I dealt with restaurant tours that I kind of get an, an, an understanding of that business, of how hard that can be on the restaurants. Can you touch on that and inform our listeners? Sure. Well, first of all, just to be super clear, when restaurants use Uber and DoorDash, um, the, the dividends from that are minimal. You're not making a lot of money on, on, on that. Uber and DoorDash are making a lot of money. But and we didn't know that as the end user. Yeah, 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 and most people don't. You know, most people think that if you own a restaurant, oh my gosh, you're rich and you, you know, you have all this money. <laughs> but that is that's not the, the case at all. I think the average in America is like a six percent return, which is not, you know, a huge amount of money. So, um, yeah, to compete with with that is again part of being relevant and staying relevant, staying open, and. You know, as restaurants, you're almost forced to use those uh, those avenues of Uber and, and DoorDash so that you are relevant, so that you do have a menu online that can be delivered to somebody at home. On the mic with Mike ESP in Richmond, we bring you the best and the brightest. That's what we do here. So how can, so give, give us the uh, sales pitch for uh, Casa de Barco, the Boathouse, and uh, Island Shrimp. So one of my favorite things to say is that we are locally owned and operated. And, um, you know, that's where our, our heart beats um, in our community. Uh, and it's important to be active in the community and give back to the community um, and, and employ people from the community. So that's the first thing. Second, our food is um, just amazing. And we send our, our concept chefs all over the world to bring back ideas and flavors uh, that we then make our own. Um, and it's, it's a great experience. Each one is different. Each one has its own vibe. Um, and you should come on in. Come on in and try it. And try this on new online ordering system. I think you're going to like it. Give it a chance. It's like Amazon. When you get on Amazon for the first time, you're like, what the heck is this? And then after a while, you're like, oh my God, it's Amazon. It's so amazing. I know. So I had a friend who uh, he didn't take his kids to the store because he said every time he took them, you know, they, they just hit them up and, you know, they're, they're just begging for stuff. And all he did was Amazon. And I guess this might have been in 2008 or so. And me and my wife, that that was just like cruel and unusual punishment because we had to take our kids. You know, that that's what you did in the 80s. You take your kids and, you know, you read on the riot act walking in and hopefully it worked. And so, you know, my wife never got into it until she got into it. Now the Amazon stuff is showing up every day. I'm like, you know, and it's just like we, she goes and gets everything at Amazon. The idea of that coming to your house and things being delivered immediately. So we're going to give the uh, online ordering a try. We're going to go and we're going to hit the button if we don't want, if we want some attention. See, Andy Taylor, he likes attention. You know, that's why he has lime green trucks for, uh, you know, junk luggers, because he likes to be noticed. So when he comes, he's going to hit the button and say, you know, I like the, the attention because, like we're saying, we want that old school. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I dine out is to get that experience. You, know? you, you don't get it at so, home? No. I don't get it at home either. So that's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. 
I'm, so a yes we, we, I'm a yes dear guy. Yes. We are in we are in business to be of service, right? That's our that's our industry. Our industry is service. So, uh, and one of our sayings in our company is say yes to the guest, right? So there, there are going to be times and situations and people that love what, what we do and there are gonna be people that want something a little different and our job is to find a way to give you service. Our job is to find a way to say yes to the guest. All right, how about catering? You guys do catering? So we are working on catering, but yes, we have catering menus and you know, uh, the governor recently lifted all of the restrictions uh, for events. So we are getting back into that and man, people are coming out. They want those life events. They want to get married. They want office parties. They want get togethers. And so we are, um, you know, hiring, uh, massive hiring uh, going on right now at all locations uh, to beef that up so that we can provide a service. So let's talk a little about the live events. Uh, what size do you, so you guys have multiple locations. Give our listeners an idea where your locations are located. And then we'll talk a little bit about the live events. Uh, because as you said, people have been on lockdown for a year. And yeah. you better, I guess you better get to you guys quick because the event dates are being tied up. They're taking. Yeah. yeah, people are calling left and right and we're booking up as, as much as we can for the staff that we have. Um, and again, you know, we're missing, you know, a couple hundred people. So um, if you're looking for a job, we pay well, and we're a great company to work for, so please come on in. Um, but uh, we have uh, locations all over Richmond. So we have all of our boat houses, with the exception of Short Pump, um, are on the water. We have one in Hopewell, we have one on the reservoir in Chesterfield, and then we have one on the James River at Rockets Landing. Um, we have three CASAs uh, in Chesterfield Town Center, at Chesterfield Town Center, Short Pump, um, and then one on the Canal Walk, also on the water. Um, and uh, interesting, because you were talking a little bit before about where house hospitality came from. So we are a boat house, and CASA is a house, and CASA del Barco means the boat house in Spanish. So that's oh. where, yep. <laughs> I'm from so Philly. I'm not cultured like that. I'm sorry. Uh, that okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you: when when restaurant groups want to they look at expanding, how do you pick the location, the next place to go to? See, that's one of the benefits yeah. of having your own radio show. What questions you ever wanted to know? You just ask the experts. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, and I'm going to brag just a little bit. Um, that a lot of times people come to us. A lot, of, a lot of times people come to us. We've had people from Virginia Beach before in Northern Virginia, um, you know, gosh, Ashland, Asheville, North Carolina. They all come and they say, hey, we kind of like what you're doing. Um, and then we pick and choose from the, 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 the invitations. And so that's how that's happened. And we've been real lucky uh, to be known for what we do and for people to want us to open stuff. How do you will deal with culture across an organization where people are spread in different locations. So how do you foster teamwork from short pump to the south side? So also a really great question. And again, it's about efficiency. So if you work for the boathouse, um, you work at all the boathouses and you're eligible to work at all the boathouses. And if you work at Casa del Barco, you're eligible to work at all the Casa del Barcos. So you can pick up shifts anytime you want all around the city. Um, and that fosters uh, great teamwork and, and provides the culture that we're looking for because you can make money whenever you want and you get to change it up and work at different locations. That's one of the great things. Okay, so it's the hiring demand is out there. You gotta be better than the next guy. Yeah. What, what's it like now? You're, you're the HR lady. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, you had to come in, you had to meet with multiple people, all those things. Now, you're hired for a job these days. Sometimes you never meet people until, well, now we're going back to it. But in, during yeah. the pandemic, we were hired and you never met anyone. And you started working and only contact was, was Zoom. Uh, can you talk a little about that as well as opportunities for advancement with you guys that, that possibly some others don't have? Yeah, so um, we, if, if you go to growwiththefam.com, www.growwiththefam.com, you can fill out an application um, and then you will get a phone interview first and we do some vetting that way. 
Uh, and then uh, the third platform is that we, we send you into a store, the store location that you want to be at, and your general manager will interview with you in person. And we did not change that. That did not change uh, through the pandemic because we believe that it is important to uh, you know, meet, meet the person in person that's going to be working with you. Uh, so we did, not, we did not change that. Wonder Mike, good Mike, how can folks find you once again? How can folks find you? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so they can go to www.growwiththefam.com and uh, that's our portal and you can fill out your application that way and um, then we will, we will call you. We're also on Facebook. So um, we found out this year that Craigslist is kind of antiquated. Uh, Indeed is even a little antiquated. And so when one of the questions we came out of the pandemic was with was that where are the employees that don't work for us yet, right? Where are they? And they are like everybody else, they're on social media, right? They've been on social media for a year on their couch, right? So we, uh, we kind of attacked social media and we just said, we're going to put a lot of our focused energy on Facebook ads and Instagram and um, find, our, find, find our kids that way. All righty. We'd like to thank you for coming on the program again. Yeah. Happy that you guys are coming on board with the uh, restaurant report because you guys have valued information. Your reputation is is outstanding in the marketplace and in the community. I'd like to thank you once again, uh, all the folks down there at Hospitality. Thank you. On the mic with Mike, uh, we'll be back. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks now. Thank you. All right, take care. On the mic with Mike, uh, Mike King, Andy Taylor here. Uh, he is with Junk Luggers. He is show sponsor. I'd like to thank him for being with us today. Uh, one last time, how can people find you? Not one last time, but how can we find you? We're pretty easy to find. We're at www.junkluggersofcentralva.com or 804-505-LUG, L-U-G-G. All right, Emmy, thanks. Now take care. We'll be back on the other side. Thank you. Thank you.